Hello fellow wrestling fans and welcome to the WWE 2016 Money in the Bank review. I'm going to be talking about the matches and what I thought about the matches itself. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to give it a rating out of 10 and tell them how I thought about the show. So let's not waste any more time and let's get straight into the kickoff match, which is the Golden Truth versus Breeze Dungo. So basically the match itself was supposed to be a comedy match. You basically had Fandango and Tyler Breeze all sunburned thanks to a segment which was on the Money in the Bank pre-kickoff show itself. So the winner of the match was the Golden Truth and nothing really special really. Just for the fact that the commentators were going over saying that this was the first win as a tag team. And just nothing really special about it. Okay so the next match on the pre-show is surprisingly a last minute call which is a tag team match between the lucha dragons and the dudley boys and once again nothing really special i mean it's the kind of match you would see on monday night raw but anyway the lucha dragons won so yeah just once again nothing really special at all okay then we start off with the money in the bank show with the fatal four-way tag team match for the tag team titles which is the new day Gallows and Anderson, the Vaude Villains, and Edso and Cass. I thought it was a good opener. It was an entertaining match as well. But however, there were a few moments that were botched. But anyway, I mean, it was a good it was a good match. Um, the New Day retains the titles, and I'm guessing that we are going to see the New Day versus Gallows and Anderson at WWE's Battleground. But we're just gonna have to wait until then. Okay, so the next match is Baron Corbin versus Dolph Ziggler. Now, one thing about it is this match isn't on the pre-show match, which is which is um good, but did it matter? It didn't matter. Um, fans just weren't really behind this match. I mean, they didn't really care about this match at all. Baron Corbin wins. Hopefully, that's the end of the rivalry. Hopefully, the next match I believe is the another tag team match which is Charlotte and Dana Brooke versus Natalia and Becky Lynch. Um, I'm going to be open here. I'm not really much of a fan of tag team women's matches on a pay-per-view show, especially if you have one of them including a women's champion. But anyway, just pointing it out there. Um, the Charlotte and Dana Brooke won. So once again, nothing really too special or anything. Um... But the only thing that was really special was the aftermatch, where you had Natalia turn heel, attacking Becky Lynch, and yeah, I'm I'm a little bit interested in see what they're gonna do with Natalia in the future. But for now, we're just gonna have to wait and see. So we get on to the next match, which is this one, what you're seeing right now on the WWE 2K16, Sheamus versus Apollo Cruz. I would probably say that not many people were interested in this match as well. I mean, it's a real shame because Apollo Crews is a real talented bloke. So I'm taking a guess that not many people were too interested in this match. I, I was for a short short amount of time. Um, you had Apollo Crews winning by a roll-up. And that's pretty much it. And I'm probably guessing they're going to keep this rivalry going to Battlegrounds. Okay, so the next match is the Dream Match. 15 years in the making. John Cena versus AJ Styles. I love this match. This was a great entertaining match. And it was a great match to show exactly what the match is about. You see, AJ Styles has been saying for weeks that he runs circles around John Cena. That he's more better and has more experience than John Cena. And by the way, this match, AJ Styles feels like he's telling the truth. Because no matter what John Cena did, AJ Styles would counter and then come up with a punch or a kick or something like that. So basically, um, John Cena hits the AA, Styles kicks out, Styles hits the Styles Clash on Cena, Cena kicks out, and by the end of the match, you had um, the referee bumped, um, Cena hit the AA, the ref is knocked out, so there was no pinfall. Out comes Anderson and Gallows, they attack Cena, and then they brought AJ Styles put Cena on top, that probably sound wrong, but don't you dare think about that, um, referee came back in the ring, and Styles wins with the 1-2-3, three. 
And what's really interesting is I don't think AJ Styles knew that Gallows and Anderson were in that match. So it's really interesting to find out what happens on Raw. Okay, the next match we have the Money in the Bank ladder match itself. We have Chris Jericho, Zemi Zayn, Kevin Owens, Alberto Del Rio, Dean Ambrose, and Cesaro. Oh my god, I almost forgot about his name. But anyway, this was a great match. I mean, it's not really one of the best Money in the Bank ladder matches, but... This was a real entertaining Money in the Bank ladder match. I mean, you had everyone doing all the spots around the ring, outside the ring. I mean, it was a great moment. And basically, during the match, you had, like, a few ladder bridges, another two ladders that just standing up, and then you had all six guys just fighting for the briefcase. We've pretty much seen that pretty much um, a few years ago, but anyway, it's still pretty cool to see that moment. Um, so at the end, Dean Ambrose won which I feel that it's the most deserving person that needed to win the Money in the Bank ladder match. I'm not going to argue with anyone that Dean Ambrose shouldn't win. I mean, somehow I feel Kevin Owens should have won, but Dean Ambrose pretty much deserved it more, especially the way how he looked strong in the Monday Night Raw segment. So, good on for Dean Ambrose. So then, before we head over to the main event, we have the filler match. We have Rusev versus Titus O'Neil for the United States Champion. And like most matches, it's not really an interesting match. I mean, fans weren't really behind it. Um, this match was to purely make Rusev look tough. So, Rusev wins. Um, nothing really special about it. So then we head on to our main event, which is Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Here's a really interesting thing, because during the match, Reigns was trash-talking and kind of sound like a heel, while Rollins was being that babyface type of person. So you had Rollins, like, doing all the high-fly movements. He'd done a bit of the comeback moment. I mean, it's basically back and forth and back and forth. Reigns hits the spear, one, two, and then a kick out. Rollins hits the pedigree, one, two, and a kick out. But at the end of it all, Rollins catches Reigns with a pedigree while Reigns was doing the spear. Reigns kicked out of the pedigree, but then Rollins hits one more pedigree, and that was all it. That was pretty much it. Um, so Rollins wins. He becomes the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And then all of a sudden, out comes Dean Ambrose, attacks Rollins from behind, and cashes in his money in the bank. The bell rings. Dirty Deeds, 1, 2, 3, the bell rings, and we have a new WWE World Heavyweight Champion in Dean Ambrose. I am really proud for Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose really needed to win the WWE World title at some point, and I'm glad he won it tonight. But the only problem I have with this is this kind of makes Seth Rollins look a bit weak. I mean, if you were to make Rollins look strong from this outcome, you should have had... Reigns beat Rollins, and then he cashes in his money in the bank on Roman Reigns, because if you, if he cashed it in on Seth Rollins, then this kind of means that Seth Rollins only holded the title for, like what, two minutes? But I'm not going to argue with anyone here, I'm just glad that Dean Ambrose got that moment by winning the WWE World Championship, and I am really happy for Dean Ambrose. Okay, now for my final thoughts about WWE's Money in the Bank. Most fans have told me this would be the best show of 2016. And do I feel it's the best show in 2016? Yeah, I think it would be. I mean, it could be between now and Tables, Ladders and Chairs, but we're going to have to wait on that. But was it the best Money in the Bank pay-per-view? Mm, it was good. It was a good show, but um, I don't feel that it's probably as the best show for the Money in the Bank. I mean, most of the matches on the card were pretty forgettable. The three matches, Cena and Styles, Money in the Bank, then Roman and Rollins, you know, these matches were good, but I don't feel that they could be the match of the year candidate, in my opinion. But overall, I'm glad that Dean Ambrose won the world title which was a great way to end Money in the Bank. So, it was a good show, and for that reason, I give Money in the Bank an 8 out of 10. It is a good show, and it's probably still one of the best shows in 2016, but it's not the best show on the Money in the Bank itself. And with that being said, 
there you have my review of WWE's Money in the Bank 2016. Do you disagree with what I say? Then comment down below and tell me what you thought about the Money in the Bank. Also, if you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a like as it shows you support the channel and I really appreciate that. Share this video with your friends who are, have an interest in wrestling and also like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. The links will be down in the description below. And if you're new to the channel, want to see more videos uploaded, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. And that being said, thank you for watching and until next time, have a great day.